With just one day to go, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris are preparing for the first debate between the presidential candidates. And Apple is reportedly set to unveil its latest iPhone models powered by artificial intelligence. The Morning Rundown starts now. From the Straight Arrow News Studio, bringing the stories that matter to you from across the United States and around the world, this is The Morning Rundown. Today is Monday, September 9th. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. We're now one day away from Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump facing off on the debate stage. Tuesday night, both presidential candidates will be in Philadelphia to answer questions over policies, address Americans' concerns in the country, and make their case for why voters should choose them in November. Over the weekend, Harris was seen by reporters on a stroll with her husband, second gentleman, Doug Emhoff. She ignored the reporter's first few questions, but then gave this quick response when asked if she's ready for the debate. Are you ready, Madam Vice President? Ready. Over the weekend, the Harris Walls campaign unveiled a website detailing policies for the first time, outlining proposals on key issues such as the economy, crime, and immigration. Harris will be in Pittsburgh today preparing for the debate with a team of advisors. Meanwhile, Trump was on the campaign trail in Wisconsin on Saturday, where he also spoke of the upcoming debate. Oh, they're waiting for the debate. You know, if I destroy her in the debate, they'll say, Trump suffered a humiliating defeat tonight, no matter what. Two of the latest battleground polls, one from the New York Times and CBS News, show razor-thin margins between the two candidates in Wisconsin, as well as Pennsylvania and Michigan. Both Harris and Trump are set to spend time in those states after Tuesday's highly anticipated 90-minute debate, which will be hosted by ABC and starts at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. After a three-year investigation, the GOP-led House Foreign Affairs Committee has released its report on the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. The 354-page report blames the chaotic withdrawal on the Biden administration, saying the effort was rushed and done despite allies and advisors saying it was a bad idea. While the Biden administration cited the Doha Agreement, a Trump-era agreement with the Taliban to leave Afghanistan by May of 2021 as a main reason for the withdrawal, the report says the decision was not based on the security situation, the Doha Agreement, or the advice of his senior national security advisors or our allies. Rather, it was premised on the president's longstanding and unyielding opinion that the United States should no longer be in Afghanistan. The report accuses the administration of missing warning signs, pointing to how quickly Kabul would fall to the Taliban upon a U.S. withdrawal, and says the planning of and calling for an evacuation was delayed. In response, the White House is accusing the committee's Republican chairman of basing the report on what they call cherry-picked facts and failing to account for any role of the prior administration. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is warning Congress that passing a temporary budget bill to keep the government open would have devastating impacts on the Defense Department. The bill would keep the federal government funded for another six months, but cap spending at 2024 levels. In a letter sent to members of Congress on Sunday, Austin says that stopgap would cut defense spending by more than $6 billion compared to the 2025 spending proposal, which Austin says would impact thousands of defense programs and damage recruiting just as the military is starting to recover from the pandemic. Congress needs to approve a stopgap spending bill before the end of the budget year on September 30th to avoid a government shutdown. The suspect in a shooting on a Kentucky freeway that left seven people injured over the weekend remains on the loose. Police say Joseph A. Couch is the man responsible for opening fire Saturday evening on I-75, striking at least 12 vehicles. Police saying in a Sunday night news briefing, Couch purchased his weapon legally the morning of the shooting. He also bought a thousand rounds of ammunition. An AR-15 rifle was found not far from the shooting scene, and Couch's vehicle was located abandoned nearby.
Police say all the victims suffered non-life-threatening injuries and are in stable condition. Over the weekend, firefighters in California are battling against more than a dozen wildfires fueled by a heat wave and high winds. The most intense blaze is the Line Fire in San Bernardino County, which has surged to over 20,000 acres, prompting the evacuation of over 11,000 residents. The Line Fire first erupted on Thursday evening and has since more than quadrupled in size. Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency, and as of Sunday afternoon, the fire was 0% contained. The blaze has injured three people, though details on their conditions are not yet available. Thunderstorm winds are complicating firefighting efforts, causing unpredictable fire behavior, while critically dry vegetation and smoke continue to pose other challenges. Officials say more thunderstorms today could further add fuel to the line fire. Finally this morning, it's Glow Time. That's the title Apple has given its event today, where the tech giant is expected to unveil its latest lineup of iPhones. Apple is set to reveal the iPhone 16 models, which will reportedly be the first ones powered by the company's artificial intelligence program, Apple Intelligence, announced earlier this year. The phones will also likely have larger screen displays and upgraded cameras. Apple is also set to show off its latest series of Apple Watches and an update to its operating system. The Glow Time event will be live streamed beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern Time from Apple's Cupertino, California headquarters. These are your top stories for this Monday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.